ko maru kai atu, ko maru kai mai, ka ngohe ngohe. Give as much as you take and all will be well. Tēnā koutou katoa. E ngā hau e whā o te motu, piki mai, kake mai. Ko pūtau aki te maunga, ko rangitai ki te awa, ko ngāti awa te iwi, ko ngaitama wera te hapu, ko uiraro a te marae. Ko mātātua te waka, ko taiarehe te maunga, ko o hine mataroa te awa, ko tūhoi te iwi, ko māhurehure te hapu, ko te rewarewa te marae. Ko Kiri Elizabeth Turifenua Prentis taku ingoa, nō reira e hoa mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. COVID has gripped the healthcare spotlight since its debut in 2020. Ho means reciprocity and is the key component of hauora. Now turning the spotlight on the ho can stimulate innovation and encourage big picture thinking. It can help leaders understand their kaitiakitanga roles and highlight the need for tikanga informed care, mana enhancing approaches and restorative practice based on hohoirongo. Mentioning te whare tapawha, equity and te tiriti o waitangi typically marks the limit of most people's consideration regarding Māori and healthcare because the value of the ao Māori is typically underestimated, which contributes to its continued marginalisation. We can look to te ao Māori for inspired innovation and transformation, and to prove my point, I'm going to show you the value derived from a single Māori concept, ho. Now every day I am greeted by a view of the volcanic island Rangitoto, so I'm pretty lucky. Now it's about 600 years old and is comprised of jagged volcanic rock. It is also the home to the largest Pahutakawa tree forest in the world. Now how is it that an ecosystem capable of supporting a Pahutakawa tree forest was able to emerge from such an inhospitable rocky environment in less than 600 years? The answer is hawa and ho. Hawa means lichen in te reo Māori, and hawa is formed from the symbiotic relationship between a fungi and a photosynthetic partner, such as an algae or bacteria. Now, fungi tubular networks can extract minerals from rock, they can form root systems, and they are responsible for the decomposition of organic matter. And their photosynthetic partners, such as um, algae and certain bacteria, can generate energy from the sun through photosynthesis. Now there is a mutual exchange and partnership between fungi and algae, or fungi and bacteria, which results in the creation of the substrate that supports more complex life, that is loam, or a primordial soil, or as Māori call it, one matua. From there, other simple life forms can emerge and they in turn support increasingly complex life forms within an ecological system. So the symbiotic relationship of hawa and how it supports the emergence of complex ecological systems is a beautiful example of the Māori notion of ho. Ho, it seems, has largely been forgotten. Rarely do you hear it mentioned except when mentioning the wind, ngā hau e whā, the four winds. But ho means much more than that. Ho is an essential element of haura, that wonderful word we use to translate health and well-being. The notion of ho brings together ecology, sociology, economy and health. Rendered down to its most straightforward translation, ho means reciprocity, ora means life, so hauora refers to the dynamic reciprocal relationships that are necessary for life and well-being, like the marriage of fungi and algae that begets entire ecosystems. In the old whare wānanga, where people went to learn to become tohunga, or priestly experts, Initiates were taught to view the world through an ecological lens. They understood the foundation of existence to be the dynamic interrelatedness of all things, tangible and intangible. Now I call that 
the ontology of whanaungatanga, and that's like Māori systems thinking, but on a grand scale. Now they were taught that the unity of soil, water and fire brings life to the land, and that te hau the, is the kaiwhakatutuki, the person who causes the completion of all things in the realms of the land, the sky, the sun, the moon and the stars. Now this understanding of the ontology of whanaungatanga and ho was applied in rites and ceremonies like the dedication rites of uh, babies at their birth to ensure a long life. Or in the case of tohunga mākutu, the knowledge was used to harm people. The compounding harms incurred from ignoring ho can be just as damaging as harm through the willful manipulation of ho. Now herein lies the importance of the role of kaitiaki tanga. Kaitiaki, guardians or stewards, require the right pūkinga skills and expertise about the ho of the system they care for in order to protect whakahaumaru, to maintain, to ara, and to restore it, or hohaurongo. Tikanga, our protocols and methods, are a guide for kaitiaki in that work. So, as an example, when the moa was hunted to extinction, the Māori at that time failed in their role as kaitiaki to protect the hau of the moa species. A kaitiaki needs to be able to identify a disturbance in the ecosystem and know how to restore it to balance to bring about hauora. So whanaungatanga and ho are the keys to sustainability and our health system transformations need to be sustainable so we need to consider both. The ultimate responsibility of kaitiakitanga for our healthcare system sits with the Ministry of Health, Manatu Hauora, through Te Whatu Ora, Health New Zealand and Te Akawhai Ora, the Māori Health Authority. Now consider the knowledge necessary to be able to be effective kaitiaki of such a large and complex system. Harm or neglect of tangata whai ora or their whānau or anyone in the healthcare workforce, any of the kaimahi, whether in the front line or the back office, will affect the hoe of the healthcare system. If facilities don't provide spaces that are conducive to whanaungatanga, Reciprocal relationships cannot be generated, let alone maintained, and you won't find hauora in those spaces. When caring for people, tikanga upholds the hau, the mana, the tapu, the modi, and the wairua of those involved. These principles are all interdependent. You can't have hauora if your mana is trampled, if your modi is depleted, if your tapu is violated and if your wairua is broken or disconnected. If our care is not informed by tikanga, we run the risk of harming people. We can compound the trauma already experienced by tangata whaiora and we can inadvertently hurt our kaimahi, our workforce, by putting them into unsafe situations without tikanga to help them navigate through. Tikanga informed care is trauma informed. Tikanga is dynamic and is tailored to the needs of the community that shape it. We learned through the COVID pandemic how tikanga can be quickly modified to ensure that it continues to benefit and safeguard the community and doesn't become harmful. COVID-19 infection control measures and tikanga are both there to protect the well-being of people and are complementary. They need not come into conflict. And you can see the necessity of Komatua and Kuya, our Māori experts, to ensure that tikanga remains current in such a dynamic context. Ho is about the reciprocal processes necessary for life. It applies to ecological systems, but also economic and social systems. Those who have studied anthropology, sociology or economics may be familiar with Marcel Mousse. Now he was an influential French anthropologist and sociologist 
whose work on gift economies specifically referenced the Māori notion of ho. Moose made ho internationally famous, and he added to the fame of the idea of mana, along with the likes of Carl Jung. But neither man really truly knew what mana or ho really meant. The simplest way that I can explain ho in an economic and sociological context is like this. In a ho economy, the currency, the thing of value or the medium of exchange that is circulated is mana. Now mana is about influence, control, being effectual, it's about agency, and most importantly, it is about empowerment. Why circulate mana? Because there is no better way to advance the interests of people than to enable their empowerment, which strengthens whanaungatanga. So to ensure a better future, the goal is to have a surplus of empowerment and to pay mana forward. Now tikanga guides our conduct to maintain the ho and to see that mana is either maintained or enhanced. How is this achieved? Through the actions of aroha, manakitanga, utu and hohaurongo. Aroha atu, aroha mai. Love given is returned. Aroha and manakitanga are probably the most well-known Māori values. Now aroha means more than just love and compassion. Aroha is about attending to the ha, the breath or the essence of a person, and seeing beyond the persona or the mask. Now dehumanization cannot exist in the presence of aroha. Manakitanga is more than just simple care, support and hospitality. Akiaki means to urge on. So mana aki tanga is the process of urging on empowerment. A form of manakitanga is the koha or gift. A koha given at a marae is not really about making a financial contribution for the costs carried by the hosts, the tangata whenua, or a guilt-driven social obligation to give. The koha should reflect the mana of the occasion, the mana of tangata whenua, and it is about manakitanga and galvanizing whanaungatanga. Further, your ability to demonstrate manakitanga is a reflection on your own mana. So let's say that a whānau from a coastal region were to visit their cousins in an inland marae. The generosity of the koha of the manuhiri, the visitors, would reflect the importance of the occasion, the mana of the tangata whenua, and the significance of past and present relationship between the people, and the desire to further enhance that relationship they might bring as their koha an abundance of kaimoana, seafood, from their region. And when the positions are reversed, the koha from the inland whānau, when they visit the coastal marae, might be an abundance of their local delicacy, like the kereru, the wood pigeon. Well, it wouldn't be the kereru because the Department of Conservation has made them a protected species. Now that is like using a rahui restriction to protect the ho of the kereru species. Now the performance metrics that we use to evaluate the healthcare system, like hospital admission rates, they don't focus on the ho or the quality of whanaungatanga, our relationships, or manakitanga or mana. If we did have such haora metrics, we'd be able to gauge how empowering our health interventions are and how well we support our health workforce to be effective and well. If the ho of our system is disturbed, there are two main ways to restore it, utu and hohaurongo. Utu is another commonly misunderstood Māori concept that is often overlooked. It tends to be reduced down to mean revenge, cost or payment, when in fact utu is about the responses taken to restore balance and dynamic harmony to a system. It is about restoring the ho and the mana. So let's say that an individual was ill. The ho of that person must be considered and their needs must be put into a broad ecological context 
to aid the determination of the response that is necessary to restore their hoe. If their mana has been trampled, then there is an obligation to restore that mana. If something of theirs has been stolen, then something of equivalent value could be taken from the thief in compensation, restoring the hoe. When there is a transgression against a person, this will affect their hoe, mana, tapu, mauri and waira. And this can lead to a cycle of retaliation, hurt, damage to the relationship and continuing loss of mana. So such situations call for the process of hohaurongo and that is to support reconciliation in the relationship and the restoration of hau. So hohaurongo is a tikanga driven peacemaking process and it is about creating a safe space um, that is controlled for both parties to share their experiences and talk things out until they can achieve air, a state of being satisfied. The Health Quality and Safety Commission have already created a course on restorative practice that is based on or informed by the process of hohaurongo and it is particularly relevant in quality assurance, complaints and responses to serious incidents. So ho means reciprocity. The example of hawa, lichen, the reciprocal relationship between fungi and algae that begets entire ecosystems is a wonderful example of ho. We have the opportunity to transform our healthcare system into more of a hauora system if we choose to. For that, we would need to focus on the ho and hauora, the dynamic reciprocal relationships necessary for life and well-being. We'd need to consider ho at all levels in relationships in the healthcare system, at the level of individuals, collectives, tangata whaiora, whānau, communities, teams, services, districts, regions and ultimately at a national level. We would need kaitiaki who protect, maintain and restore the hau of the hauora system and in order to be effective kaitiaki they would need to have the right pukenga, the right skills about the hau of the system they care for. They would need to be able to identify a disturbance in the hau and determine how to restore it to dynamic harmony. They would need some kaitiakitanga performance metrics to guide their work and hauora metrics that map systems and measure the quality of whanaungatanga and mana and evidence of manaakitanga. We would need to think about how to protect the hau and utilise tikanga informed models of care that protect the hau, the mana, the tapu, the mauri and the wairua of people creating the optimal conditions for hauora. Now that will require more kaumātua and kuia, our tikanga experts, to support dynamic tailoring of tikanga and adequate resourcing to develop tikanga informed models of care and workforce training and support. We would need to maintain the hau by supporting a hau economy that accounts for everyone and neglects no one with a currency of mana, empowerment. We would need to invest in aroha and manaakitanga to generate a surplus of mana and future-proof the system and support transformative potential. We would need to know how to restore the hau by making use of utu and hohaurongo, responses that restore dynamic harmony and peace. So there you have it. My six key points or six opportunities are that we can transform our healthcare system into more of a hauora system if we focus on the hau and hauora, if we have kaitiaki who protect, maintain and restore the hau, if we protect the hau by using tikanga informed models of care, maintain the hau by supporting a hau economy with a currency of mana, and restore the hau by using utu and hohaurongo. Nō reira e hikama, kua pau te hau. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.